सो वेलकम 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 एवरी वन टू दिस अमेजिंग रिविजन वेर वी विल रिवाइज इन डेज फोर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी बट बिफोर रिवाइजिंग इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस ऑन यूट्यूब एंड इफ यू आर नॉट सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल first subscribe and then only watch the revision right also if you like the revision do like and share it with your friends as well who might be benefited from this revision lecture okay so why waste time and let's start the revision in 3 2 1 and go so first of all the number of index was index 40 name is investment property so when we will come under this index yes whenever there is any investment property which is held for earning rentals or for capital appreciation or for both so if either of the criteria satisfied it will be treated as a investment property either held to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or for both acha apart from this there was some confusion which can arise so i have bifurcated this part so just read this first of all even in india 16 it was written if it is held for use to earn rentals for rental to others in india 16 this was mentioned so rental to others is covered under 16 or 40 so just remember if giving on rent is your business then you will go under india 16 if giving on rent is not your business still i have given the property on rent for example i am into teaching business but i had excess funds so i acquired a property and gave it on rent so giving on rent is not my business still i am giving it on rent so it will be india 40 also land and building is only covered under india 40 okay do remember acha apart from this if buying and selling the property is your business then that property will be a inventory for you but if you are buying a property holding it for capital appreciation so that you can later on you can sell it but this is not a business so that will be covered under index 40 do remember that part okay then there is also one more clarification given of owner occupied property owner occupied property is nothing but a pet name for index 16 pp right okay some examples are given out of this only one example is relevant that is employee occupied property will be covered under india 16 do remember this part okay then there was the recognition criteria when will you record the uh, investment property in your balance sheet same criteria like india 16 future economic benefits and cost can be measured reliably then there was the this point of measurement what is the meaning of measurement at what value will you record it so there are two cases in this initial measurement subsequent measurement initial measurement always 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 at cost what will form part of cost if the asset is purchased the same principles that we studied in index 16 purchase price at non refundable taxes at all the directly attributable expenses which will include the following okay also if there is any deferred consideration that means if you are promising to pay after a one year and they are charging you some interest that interest will not form part of your cost you will record the asset at the day one cost okay do remember that part okay do you remember my chroma wala example which i given in index 16 if i am paying for the macbook on day one i will have to pay 2 lakhs if i pay after one year i will have to pay 2.2 lakhs so that extra 20000 is interest that will not be capitalized unless and until it is borrowing cost as per index 23 that will be studied later on otherwise that interest will not be capitalized we will record the asset at 2 lakhs only same point is here as well acha what if we acquired the investment property by way of exchange that is same like index 16 for outgoing asset we recorded carrying amount for incoming asset we have three preferences first preference is fair value of asset given a plus cash paid if any third, second preference is fair value of asset acquired and third preference is carrying amount of asset given a plus cash paid if any if the transaction lacks commercial substance then there is only one preference that is carrying amount of asset given a plus cash paid if any of course i am rewinding these points quickly because these are same like india 16 okay sir what if the investment property is held by lessee as a right to use that measurement will be done as per index 116 leases leave that point okay done sir what about subsequent measurement sir so here is the interesting point it is different from 16 and 38 yes in subsequent measurement also we have only one model that is cost model fair value is only found out for disclosure purpose okay so if anyone will ask you whether fair value is to be computed you will say the answer is yes why but only for disclosure purpose acha one more thing what if the fair value is not available so you will have to state the fact along with reason what is the meaning of fact along with reason it means that you will have to state this fact that fair value cannot be computed along with the reason why it cannot be computed simple clear okay sir then subsequent cost incurred if you are incurring any subsequent when cost in the nature of servicing or repairs and maintenance then it will transfer to profit and loss but if you are replacing any part then you will add the new value of the new part and the old carrying amount of that part will be recognized it is just like component accounting in index do you remember we used to do this if you are replacing any engine so we used to add the new value of new cost of the engine and replace the uh, deduct the old value of the engine old carrying out of the engine same thing if you are replacing let's say in a building or replacing any wall so the new 
कॉस्ट ऑफ द न्यू वॉल विल बी एडेड एंड द ओल्ड कैरिंग आउट ऑफ दैट ओल्ड वॉल विल बी डी रिकग्नाइज ओके वन क्लैरिफिकेशन ऑल्सो गिवन दैट If you have an investment property, it will also be depreciated, except in case of land. So, if IP is a building, you will depreciate. If IP is a land, you will not depreciate. Simple. Then the next point: property held for more than one purpose. What is the meaning of this? You are having a, a big property. Some portion of it you are using it. Some portion of you are renting it. Example: you have a ten floor building. Seven floors you are using it. Three floors you are renting it. So. can the floors be sold separately of course yes floors are saleable separately so if these two parts can be sold separately you will you can account for both these parts separately the portion you are using you will show as pp the portion you are renting you will show as ip but what if the two parts cannot be sold separately example i have a single flat some portion of the flat i am using some portion of the flat i am renting now a single flat cannot be sold separately right so in that case don't check the majority huh? don't check the majority here you will check whether the use portion is significant or not so the portion you are using whether you feel this is significant or not significant does not mean majority significant means material whether your usage is significant so i can say in my case 30% is significant for me 30% space in a flat is significant right so if the use portion is significant then the full property will be classified as pp but if you feel the use portion is not significant then the full property will be ip so what is the definition of significant it is a matter of judgment some portion might be significant for you but not for me and vice versa right okay next point ancillary services provided to occupants of property what is the meaning of this along with the property you are also giving some additional services so if those services are insignificant for example you gave a property along with the property you gave security services only one single service that means only one single service along with such a big property such service can be treated as insignificant so in that case you will treat the property given on rent as ip only but what if you are giving the property also along with that you are giving all the services cooking security reception housekeeping and all services you are only providing so hotel also you are providing to tenant and the services also you are providing to tenant so in that case we will treat the ancillary services given as significant so it is as good as you yourself are running the hotel right so you will treat the property as ppe and not ip right do remember that part again here which services are significant insignificant it is a matter of judgment okay next point property leased to other group members now what is the meaning of this let's assume parent gave a property on rent to subsidiary so parent prepares two types of financials sfs and cfs so from parents individual point of view this property will be treated as ip but from cfs point of view parent gave the property on rent to subsidiary and subsidiary is using it so from cfs point of view the property is being used within the group so for cfs point of view this property will be treated as ppe only okay this is given here next point transfer to or from investment property can we move out of investment property to some other indias or can we come into investment property from some other indias right that is transfer to or from investment property so such transfer is allowed within from 16 we can come to 40 from 40 we can go to 16 from 40 we can go to 2 from 2 we can come to 40 but when will this transfer happen only when there is evidence of change in use okay if there is only a change in management intention if the management is thinking that we will stop using and start renting but there is no evidence only management is thinking as of now so thinking is not sufficient only intention is not sufficient there should be evidence how do we provide the evidence if you if previously you were using it and now you want to rent it so you will stop using it right and you will try to find the tenant you are actively finding the tenant for renting it this is evidence of change in use then you can classify from 16 to 40 okay do remember so such transfer is allowed first point second point transfer will happen only when there is evidence of change in use third point only change in, in intention is not provided providing any evidence of change in use okay the fourth point when you are transferring from one indias to another indias at what value will the transfer happen so the old carrying amount of the previous indias will become the cost of the new indias let's say for example i had a pp of 10 lakhs i used it for 3 years now the latest carrying amount is 7 lakhs on this date i decided to rent out the property so this 7 lakhs will become the cost for ip when the transfer happens simple okay now last point is d recognition what is the meaning of d recognition it means moving the asset out of your balance sheet it happens when you sell the asset or the life is over if you are selling it you might arrive at some gain loss it will be transferred to profit and loss simple one summary is given you can refer it on your own once you have read the full fr okay so this was the revision of concepts of indias 40 okay perfect so now we will revise all the questions of indas 40 we have done the concepts now it's time to revise all the important questions so in this revision i will also revise i will tell you the important questions right and also we will revise those questions because 
आउट ऑफ इंडियस फोर्टी ओनली फ्यू क्वेश्चन आर देर विच आर वेरी ट्रिक योर इंपॉर्टेंट रेस्ट आर बेसिक क्वेश्चन सो यू विल बी एबल टू टैकल दम इवन विदाउट डूइंग इट फॉर द नेक्स्ट टाइम राइट सो now let's start revising the first important question which we we should revise is illustration number 9 now let me give you a gist of what this illustration had to talk about so ideally this question is based on the concept of transfer from investment property to another indias do you remember we can transfer we can transfer from indias 40 to another indias or from another indias we can come to indias 40 same is the case here so ideally we had a land right which we purchased on 1st april 11 we used it till 30th september because it is a land it is non depreciable so till 30th september it was shown at 2 cr only now from the next day we started to began the began to convert the property into 10 separate flats which is intended to sell in ordinary course of business ordinary course of business means you are going to sell it and it is going to be a nature of business that means from indes 40 you will go to indes 2 now let's uh, clarify this thing when you are going from indes 40 to another indes when do we do that when there is evidence of change in use there was evidence on 1st october at what value will we go from indes 40 to indes 2 we will go at the cost of 2 cr the carrying amount of indes 2 will become the sorry the carrying amount of indes 40 will become the cost of indes 2 simple right so i showed it on first day we have a land also then land is not depreciated so on after 4 years also it will be at the same carrying amount and the day of transfer also it will be at the same carrying amount now once it is gone into Indes two. Now the provisions of Indes two are applicable. So what we did was first October the inventory cost was two CR. Then we also incurred some construction cost because we wanted to convert the land into some flats. So we incurred a construction cost of sixty lakhs. So now total cost of inventory is two point six CR on year end. The question says it is still in WIP stage. It is not yet ready. So you will have to measure the inventory at cost or NRV whichever is lower. Cost is two point six CR. The information of NRV is given below. they are saying each flat you will sell for 50 lakhs you have total 10 flats right and cost of completion is 40 lakhs for wip the nrv is selling price minus cost of completion right so you will say <coughs> it is 50 lakhs into 10 flats 5 cr minus 40 lakhs so total nrv will be 4.6 cr okay so now 2.6 or 4.6 which are very lower so you will value at 2.6 cr done this was a illustration number 9 now let's move on towards illustration number 10 again a very simple question what are they basically asking is we have we had two buildings building a building e building b so we want to show the balance sheet extract of this so in the information was given that the building a was investment property information of purchase was given we purchased the now the important point here is they are saying we want the information we want the values as on 31st march 20 but how the information is given that is important it is saying that we have a building a life 20 years out of which 5 years have expired as on 1st april 19 that means the life expired is 5 years but this expiry is still 1st april 19 we want the life expired till 1st 31st march 20 so if you are happy birthday on 1st april 11 oh sorry 1st april 19 you have become 5 years old that means one year later you will become how many years old 6 years old remember happy birthday wala example okay sir so the life expired is 6 years till 31st march 20 do remember that part so accordingly we will calculate the depreciation of building a similarly information for building b was also given so we will do that some profit and loss items are given we will record in profit and loss and this para talks about the fair value information so if this building a and building b are investment property fair value is used for disclosure purpose so just see how i did this question so we first computed the uh, values of building a i depreciated for 5 years separately and then for one another another year separately because i wanted the depreciation for that particular year also so that i can record in profit and loss similarly building b is only one year old i will depreciate this so i got the carrying amount of a and b on 31st march 20 i will record that in balance sheet then profit loss items were given recorded as it is one more item will appear that is depreciation so only only take the current year depreciation okay that's it and fair value we are giving it for disclosure purpose done and dusted <coughs> this was illustration number 10 then we come to mock test rtp mtp past exam section there was one question number 1 a uh, year it is a very simple case we have 10 floors building value of 10 cr first seven floors you are using it top three floors you are renting it so this is top three floors are ip below seven floors are pp simple bifurcation is given the cost of top three floors is 3 cr so out of 10 cr 3 cr is ip so 7 cr will be pp and the question says for this 7 cr for this 7 cr you have to give the bifurcation also you have to give the bifurcation also of land and building i am not saying this the question says that that in pp in where it, where it is given the remaining cost of 7 cr can be allocated 25% towards land and 75% towards building 
right so we have total three assets one is ip then one is ppe land and then is pp building okay so we have done in the same procedure if you want to see just see here we have a pp land and building and ip so ip cost was 3 cr then the remaining pp was 7 cr under 7 cr you have to bifurcate land land was 25 percent building was 75 percent this was given in the question so we bifurcated we got the cost on day one land you will not depreciate building you will depreciate you will depreciate and find the value on year end okay so we got the value on year end the question has done one mistake saying that the company wants to follow fair value model for ip it is not permitted for ip you have to follow cost model for pp they want to follow cost model that is permitted okay so for for pp we can follow cost model but for ip fair value not permitted you will only follow cost fair value can only be given for disclosure purpose okay so fair value was given but the fair value of total property was given as 15 cr i wanted to bifurcate between all the elements between the land element between the building element i wanted to bifurcate it so how do i bifurcate it so i bifurcated the total fair value in the ratio of cost on day one so we bifurcated it right so we got the fair value of respective parts ideally ideally if you go to see the fair value of these two parts are irrelevant but the fair value of IP part is relevant for disclosure purpose. Simple. This was question number one done and dusted. Then we came on towards question number two. A very, very, very good question. Why? Because here we have three properties, right? Now, what the question does is the company has done certain mistakes in this question, right? So it it asks us to rectify those mistakes, right? So for example, they have three properties. The first two should be PP, the third one is IP, right? So now what they are doing is Subsequent measurement for the properties are given for property one cost for PP cost is permitted for PP revaluation is also permitted but for IP revalue is not permitted so one mistake second mistake which maximum students will forget is these both PPs are factory do you remember same class same model so for both factories either you should apply cost model or for both factories you should apply revaluation model same class same model okay do remember that <coughs> okay then what the company has done is they has presented all three properties as PP. Mistake. Only two are PP, one is IP. Okay. The company are not depreciating. Again, a mistake. You have to depreciate. Then they are saying that the difference between purchase price and market value is transferred to PNL. Wrong. It should be transferred to OCI. One more mistake. Now they are asking us advice to correct it and prepare a balance sheet extract. In case you remember, we have to solve this question in two cases. Case 1 and case 2. Why, sir, case 1, case 2? Because for pp the case one will be assuming that though for both the pps you are following cost model right and for ip you are following cost model and case two will be for both pps you are following reval model and for ip again you are following cost model only right so in this question i told you to give the relevant concepts also because advice was asked so what all concepts do we present here it is mentioned you can just read this okay then we give case one for both pps you are using cost model so i just depreciated both the pps for one year and ip for one year i got the cost of pp on year end ip as well ip i am disclosing the fair value as well and depreciation in profit and loss extract right and then in case two in case two for both pps i will use reval model and for ip i will use cost model only because for ip we have only one model now for reval model the fair value was given on year one end so first you will find the carrying amount on year one end so take the cost depreciate for one year you will get the carrying amount on first year end compare with the fair value you got a gain same is the case with property number two okay we again got a gain and property number three is it is because ip you will follow cost model right now you will record the pp at the respective fair values IP you will record, depreciation you will record. But one thing which you will forget is you also got a gain. So such gain will also form part of your PNL. But under PNL, do you know we prepare a separate column OCI? See, ideally PNL has two columns. One is PNL itself and one is OCI. So under OCI you will show revaluation gain. And such gain, in case you remember, is accumulated in your other equity, revaluation surplus. So you will transfer to revaluation surplus as well. So we have done that, right? The next question which is important is question number three of MTP RTB past exam. What does this question talk about? So it gives you various expenses. So you need to see whether you need to capitalize or expense it out. So this all expenses you need to capitalize. What all are to be not considered? Here one expense is that 10 lakh construction cost but it says including 60,000 refundable taxes. So refundable taxes you will exclude, right? So you will only capitalize 9.4 lakhs and 140,000 is abnormal wastage which will be transferred to PNL. So ideally you get a total cost. If you consider you get a total cost of I guess of after considering all the expenses you will get 63 lakh 40,000. The question says that now the important part is the question says that it has a two story building. That means it is a two floor building. Now the relevant part here is it says out of these two floors the ground floor is being rented to subsidiary 
डू रिमेंबर प्रॉपर्टी लीज टू अदर ग्रुप मेंबर्स सो वेन यू आर रेंटिंग द ग्राउंड फ्लोर टू सब्सिडरी फ्रॉम एस एफ एस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द पेरेंट विल से दिस इज द आईपी बट फ्रॉम सी एफ एस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बिकॉज यू आर रेंटिंग इट टू योर ओन मेंबर फ्रॉम सी एफ एस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट विल बी पीपी ओनली so what about the other floor the other floor as it is the parent is using it himself so the other floor from sfs point of view is also pp from cfs point of view is also ip so sorry for cfs point of view also it is pp right and they say that equal value can be attributed to each floor now how do i present this so to so see i got a total value of 63 like 40 ground floor 50% value first floor 50% value right the cost in sfs <coughs> Will be bifurcated fifty fifty percent. Now in SFS, how do you show the ground floor? It will be IP from SFS point of view, and the first floor will be PP only because they are using it only. But from CFS point of view, both the floors will be PP because the ground floor you are giving rent to your own subsidiary. When you are giving in rent to your own group member, in that case from CFS point of view, you you will not classify as IP. Right? Do remember that point. So just to explain you better, I have also given the extract. The, so the SFS extract will look something like this from parents point of view of course because parent is giving on rent so for parent 50% property will be pp 50% property will be ip but from cfs point of view for parent the full property will be pp this is how it will be shown and this completes our revision our complete revision of india's 40 so in case if you like the revision do don't forget to subscribe to the channel because more such english revision videos will be uploaded on this uh, channel also uh, if you want these board notes which uh, where i have written the solution i will upload on my telegram on my telegram you can join and scroll to the file section you will find this uh, board notes okay so i hope you like it do share it with your friends thank you so much bye bye everyone take care see you all bye bye